students here today are from Washington Lee High School, which is close by. They live in the Potomac River watershed, and therefore the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Most of them never um, have been on the water, so they have no idea where all the drainings in the city street go to. Uh, they have no idea um, that they're actually even fish in the river. So the goal for these students today is for them to come up with an assessment of how healthy these rivers are. So we're in the Anacostia River right now and we're motoring down to the Potomac. So we're going to break up into four groups and each group is going to get a map and a set of questions, okay? What two states border the Potomac River? So we found this little uh, data, dotted line right here. It says Maryland, Virginia. Great job. We really want students to be able to see firsthand the impact that we have on the Chesapeake Bay and on these river systems. And the only way to do that is to get them outside. Hopefully that's going to generate a sense of responsibility and they'll take on some, some stewardship as they grow up to be productive citizens. What's the function of plankton? Why is it important? Why do we care? <laughs> In our food web, we call it a primary producer. So, you don't see a whole lot right now, but I can assure you, when we uh, put this on a microscope, you'll see some things on there. If it wasn't for these guys, would there be us? No. No way. Because this stuff right here, especially like the phytoplankton, is responsible for giving us more oxygen than actually the trees that you see around here. I think it's like really important, especially for our generation to take an interest in it because by the time we're all grown up and we're adults, then it's going to either be better or way, way worse. Multiple generations before us did a lot of polluting, so we need to figure out how to do better with pollution and find ways to keep the river clean. So we tested how much what the acid is, we had a 7.9 and there's no salt in the water, which is good because it's supposed to be fresh water. I think it's better to learn when you're actually hands-on, doing everything, like experimenting, learning with like people who are working in the field for like a long time, so. It gives us a better understanding about like what we're going to be learning. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Something different. Well, the advantage of it is you, it's more memorable. I mean, rather than writing a piece of paper down and like pen and paper taking tests on it, we can come out here and actually do it for ourselves. Basically what they measured was how far down into the water the light could shine. And they found that it could shine down 90 centimeters. So is that a good reading? No. It is not a good reading. All right. We've just performed a set of tests to figure out um, some water chemistry to see what that might mean for our catch. So we're going to go fishing in just a few minutes and look at the biodiversity in the water. So we're going to um, put a trawl net in the water, drag it across the channel here in the Anacostia River. I really like the fish part, trawling for the fish. I didn't think we'd get fish that were that big. I thought it would mostly be like the little ones, but I was happy that we got the big ones because they're cooler. Of course, we got some white perch here. We got a different kind of sunfish. This one here is called a pumpkin seed sunfish. Um, it has the false eye as well. So this guy right here is called a bluegill. How is it alive if it can't go fast in the water? It doesn't have any spikes on its body. Because you can't eat the shell. Right, so it actually has adapted in a different way. Not only is that gonna hurt if you try to bite it, it makes it appear bigger to predators when they raise the spikes up on their body. We're looking for different species. Eight different species is pretty good. That's gonna indicate good health for the river. Well, it was kind of like weird. This is like squirming around and everything, but other than that, it's like, it's, it's really cool. The message that I really want the students to take home with them is that it's not hopeless, uh, that we have seen improvements of the health of the bay over time, and, you know, part of that is big changes, the improvements to sewage treatment, but it's also just small changes throughout the day. All of those small changes add up and equal improvement and um, I think we're really starting to see that. Nothing can substitute actually coming out here um, and we just had a fabulous time and we love Chesapeake Bay Foundation because this would not be possible without them. There's a saying that we all live downstream 
So it's important to know kind of all the entire area, what's going on in the whole watershed. And hopefully this will give more context um, to what they're learning. Because we are in the future and we can change like how the, the rivers are, how the world will react to us, we can change that.